Today, I'll be rating all of my IT and cybersecurity jobs I've had throughout my career. I'm gonna be rating them on difficulty and stress, like scores from one to five for both of those. And then I'm gonna give them a job satisfaction score, which I'll calculate based on how difficult and stressful the job was in relation to how much I actually got paid for the job. I'm also gonna give a super brief explanation for each job and kind of talk a bit about why I scored them the way that I did. So if you're interested in working in IT or cybersecurity, this video will probably be interesting to you and maybe give you some ideas of what you can expect once you get into the workforce. Or if you just wanna be entertained by me complaining about my past jobs, uh, definitely keep watching. And before we get started, I just want to say I have a whole bunch of practice exams on my company website. If you go to joshmaticore.tech slash exams, you can practice for A+, Network+, Security+, CISSP, almost an ITIL deck, and we're building a CISA+, or a CISA+, however you like to say that deck right now. All the practice questions are complete with answer explanations as well as a reference to a partic the particular book that the question came from as well as the page number. So getting right into the content, um, at the very end after I'm done discussing each job, I'm going to look at them as a whole and see if we can identify any trends with them, like see if you know more difficult jobs equals more pay or a higher satisfaction um, equals less pay or, or that type of thing. So. If you just want to skip to that and just see everything at the end, go ahead and look. skip skip to this timestamp. Otherwise, uh, let's get started. So getting right into things, the very first job I had was part-time help desk. Very easy, very low stress, but also very low salary, resulting in like kind of a low job value. But I did enjoy this job a lot. And by the way, if you're curious, the salary, or rather the job value is just calculated by adding the difficulty and the stress and then dividing the salary by that and then dividing that by a thousand to make it a smaller number. It's kind of confusing, but the lower the number for job value, kind of like, you know, the lower <laughs> the job's value was essentially. The next job I had, it was basically in the same department, still relatively easy, still relatively low stress, but it had quite a, a higher salary, a livable wage, right? like 75K for this one. I was basically doing most of the same stuff, but I had a bit more responsibility. I was working with SCCM and like imaging computers and whatnot. The third job, junior network admin, um, incredibly easy because I wasn't even doing anything, but it almost had maximum stress because this particular job was on a Marine Corps base in Japan um, and I was surrounded by Marines and other military personnel. And this the job was just too easy. It's not even worth talking about because I wasn't even hardly doing anything. But the stress was super high because um, the Marines are unreasonable, at least on that base. It's basically like being surrounded by a bunch of people who are like ultra confident and like really like mean to everybody, but they actually don't know what they're doing. And it just made for like a really bad work experience. Job value 10 because I made about 50K at this job. I took it because I wanted to go to Japan and get a security clearance. I have a whole video that talks about it. Next job, cloud support engineer. Oh, I'm missing a P. Cloud support engineer for Microsoft Intune. This job was incredibly difficult and incredibly stressful, not because Intune is difficult, but I just didn't have the tools at my disposal to do my job well, in spite of me asking for them many times. So basically cloud support engineering, you can watch this video, but it's you're basically supporting large organizations and the customer who's calling you is usually like the senior admin or sys admin or something at a large organization. So you know if they couldn't figure it out, it's probably not gonna be an easy problem. So that, and with that comes like time constraints and SLA and it's just really stressful. And especially when you, when you don't have the tools you need to do your job, it just ends up sucking, right? And this job paid 62K, but because the stress and difficulty was so high, the job value is like the same as a job I was making 12K at, which is really sad. Next job, point of sale admin for SCCM. Basically, I was contracting for REI, like the sporting company, and they were refreshing all of their like registers, right? Um, relatively, it wasn't too easy. It was about average difficulty because I was incorporating SCCM and scripting. I was programming a decent amount in this, of, in this job. And the stress was pretty, it was pretty average as well. Um, the job itself was not so stressful, but the upper management was incompetent. If you're watching this upper management, you were not good. And they just would hire like too many people and just fire them like really willy nilly. And then I saw what was happening. I just ended up quitting that job because I, I didn't want to be a part of it. But as far as the job goes, it was okay. And the next job, desktop admin. This was in Hawaii. 
The difficulty was slightly easier and it was less stress too. This job was really nice actually. Um, again, I was dealing with SCCM, a lot of imaging computers and deploying software. It was a decent job and an okay, I guess, salary. Um, Hawaii has lower than average pay, but um, you know, decent, decent enough, I guess. Next job, senior cybersecurity analyst, slightly more difficult, um, same level of stress. The job itself was not hard per se. It's always the human component of cybersecurity jobs that make it hard. To be honest, like cybersecurity, once you understand like the, the basics of everything, it, technically speaking, most jobs are kind, kind of easy unless you're doing some crazy like malware reverse engineering. But the hard part is like uh, building, especially when you work in governments, is like building rapport with people and trying to get people to like, you know, behave and do stuff. So that's why I gave it a three. But this job was pretty decent, um, you know, a decent enough salary, about the same job value as the desktop admin from the previous job. Uh, next job, I was a consultant. I was working at Avanade uh, doing an automation engineer. Basically with this job, I was doing like another point of sale refresh for Ross, which is like, you know, refreshing their cash registers. I was doing a lot of automation. So the job was like, I would say it's average difficulty because I was incorporating programming with other stuff. But the stress was high because uh, consulting just they just work you like really hard, and you often like do work that that gets thrown away, or they try to like make you work like sixty hours and then tell you to report forty hours. It's just like stupid. And I had to travel a lot for this job as well, so you know going to the airport is it gets old after a while. So I kind of rated this one kind of a bit high on the stress. Um, definitely lower job quality than the previous jobs, but it was like a, a decent enough salary. Next job, uh, senior cybersecurity engineer. I was working in governance, risk, and compliance for King County. Again, the cybersecurity job is like quite easy, to be honest. It's quite easy. Most cyber jobs, in my opinion, are easy as far as like, you know, technically speaking, once you, you know, you know, enough stuff. But the stress level is kind of high just because like people don't cooperate. It, it just gets annoying after a while and it feels like I can't do my job because like other like people are just like screwing off and like not cooperating, making the job difficult, but the pay is higher. Thus the job value is, you know, higher, or at least, you know, at least higher than the previous jobs. Next one, almost exact same thing, cybersecurity program manager. I was almost doing the same thing. Um, I was heading up a vulnerability management program for a local government. It's a relatively large one. Technically it's quite easy. Um, stress level is kind of high because again, people don't cooperate in cyber. It's really annoying salary, relatively getting up their salary and thus increasing the job value. And then my last job, um, principal security analyst, uh, that's kind of a weird title. It's more so like automation engineer. I was automating like a lot of security related stuff. Uh, I would say difficulty is probably 3.5. Maybe even four, um, just because I had to like tie together so many like different random systems, and I had to do a lot of different random stuff. If it if it wasn't me, some <laughs> the person's gonna have like a hard time doing it, just because for some reason I just happened to know like a, a lot of the stuff that needed to be done for that job, or I, I kind of already knew it already for some reason. But the stress level is like really low. Uh, my team was really nice kind of when you get to that my experience anyway when you get to that level where you're doing like kind of hard stuff and your salary is like kind of high usually your team is like really competent and nice and they're just like really reasonable people so the stress level for this job was like quite low salary is quite high resulting in a, a relatively uh, high of job value if that makes sense so just to kind of look at any correlations or patterns or trends i guess in this um, if I arrange these by difficulty, like easiest job to the most difficult, and I look at salary and job value, it, it's kind of a bit all all over the place. Like the the most difficult job I had only paid 62k, and the two easiest jobs I had, one of them paid 50k. It's like not that far off. And same with stress. If I arrange this like the least stressful jobs to the most stressful job, it, it's a bit all over the place. Um, I don't really see that much of a correlation, but if I look at salary, like, you know, the highest paid job to the you know highest paid to lowest paid, like it's not that big of a surprise, I, I suppose, but in terms of a job value, there's like a pretty obvious trend. Like the, <laughs> who, who would have thought, like the more you got paid, the more valuable the job is, right? Um, I'm sure this there's gonna be exceptions to this, but this has just been my experience, I guess, so far in my career. 
I hope that was at least a bit entertaining. Probably like for me, it's not going to be the same as other people. I kind of have weird situations and I've worked weird jobs, but I hope at least it was entertaining. And I do want to say I do teach a hands-on cybersecurity course. We do a bunch of stuff in the cloud, like create a sock, like a mini sock. We create a honey net. We deal with live attack traffic on the internet and practice incident response. We set up a SIM, which is Microsoft Sentinel. Bunch of people gone through that program already and have gotten jobs. In my opinion, it's pretty high quality, so definitely check that out. I'll put a link in the description. And don't forget about the free practice exams either. And we will see you in the next video.